Off the field, things have gone relatively quiet in terms of personnel wanting to leave the club. However, we have begun to pick up some very serious injuries to some key players. The problems just seem relentless. But on the field, it's business as normal, and we remain unbeaten in the Portuguese league. Can it continue? Who knows? Let's go and kick some balls. Hello and welcome back to the Road to Glory Part 9 Season 2 here at Benfica. And as you can see on the pitch, things are going extremely well. And we not only are unbeaten in the Portuguese league, we have a 100% record as it stands after seven games complete. And we do have a game in hand over the teams that are in second and third place, Braga and Porto. And a victory against Sporting CP will mean that we could possibly go seven points clear after eight games. Quite a remarkable achievement for a team who is really struggling to hold on to key personnel. And during that run of seven victories, we did come up against Porto, a team that have beaten us in our last two encounters, a team that we were really struggling to work out how to beat. And after a couple of tweaks to the way that we were playing in a very feisty encounter, this is what happened. And maybe, just maybe, we have now found out how to beat Porto. And how did we do it? Well, we decided to tweak the tactic a little bit. And we had previously known that Porto were an exceptionally good passing team. And so we made the decision that perhaps pressing them was not the best idea. And what we decided to do, we changed the tactics by working the ball into the box. We then decided to come off the counter press completely. We were not going to play out of defense. And the biggest change of all, we went to a low block and came off the trigger press. And that seemed to have changed the outcome of how the game went. And whether or not we took Porto by surprise, just as a one-off, or we have discovered a way to beat these good passing teams, I'm not sure. But it did enable us to win that very, very important fixture and remain at the top of the league. In terms of injuries, we've had a number of injuries to players over the last few weeks and it's not getting any easier. And we currently have two very important players who are out long term. Furland Mendy, the left back, he's expected to be out for three to four weeks. He's going to be a big miss. And Facundo Torres, one of our three best players, he's got himself injured. And he's going to be out for up to another seven weeks. He's not likely to return until probably mid-January, end of January with a torn hamstring. And it does seem 
seem per perhaps we're about to go into a period where we're going to get some very serious injuries to key personnel. But it is what it is. We have to keep going. We have some very big games coming up. And today we have two very big games coming up. We are away at Sporting in a game that we should win, but is a potential banana skin. And then we will be away at Gothenburg in the Champions League. And let's take a look at what has been happening on the pitch and why I am not so upset for this episode. And when you were last with us, you saw us beating Santa Clara by a goal to nil with that last minute penalty. And we followed that up with a cup win against Covinia by four goals to nil. And then we lost in the Champions League to Real Madrid. In this game, this was the first time that I had tried out that low block system and I felt that it deserved a, another chance after narrowly losing to Real Madrid. And it was only a mistake by the centre-back that actually allowed Real Madrid to get their goal. I thought we played well in that system and maybe that's the way to play against stronger teams. And then against Porto, we tried the tactic out again and we beat them, as you saw by four goals to nil. We then beat Gondomar in the third round of the Portuguese Cup by five goals to nil quite easily. And we followed that up with an impressive 4-2 home win against Freiburg in the Champions League. Today we will be playing against Sporting in the Portuguese League, our game in hand over the teams below us. And then we will be playing three days later against Gothenburg in the Champions League at home. And in the Champions League group table, we are currently in 13th place. We have played three and won two. We have six points. And we are a long way behind the top four, I guess. Napoli, Milan, Paris Saint-Germain, Dortmund. They have all won all of their games so far. Liverpool and Real Madrid have seven points. And so we are still there or thereabouts. And a win against Gothenburg could push us up into the top eight. And that would be quite an achievement for this very young Benfica team. And so now we have to concentrate on the two games that we have to play. And I think it's time to go and play against Sporting. Let's go and kick some balls. And so the team for today against Sporting CP is Gurbic in goal with Rodriguez, Sa, Marato and Bard at the back. Luis Palacios and Neres in midfield with Abde, Gomez and Novoa up front. This is a game we should be winning. We don't traditionally have any problems playing against Sporting CP. So I would expect this team to go out there and win this football match. And I will be very disappointed if we don't. I'm going to say if you carry your last performance into this game you will do very very well one or two players are feeling quite aggressive palacios is feeling quite aggressive i'm not quite sure what that is about marato is feeling quite aggressive i'm not sure if that's to do with the opposition or to do with me who knows <laughs> we're about to find out i think and it has been a fairly quiet start we have dominated the game so far, but it is Sporting with the first highlight. And there are just five minutes gone and Sporting are just running at us. That's an interesting move by them. They don't normally run at us. That is, looks like we've given away a penalty within the first few minutes. And uh, the referee's going to have a look. It looked like a very decent taco to me. The ball went off in the direction that it should have gone if he got his foot on it. The referee is checking. It's usually awarded. I think we're going to go a goal behind early on. And the referee has decided no penalty. And that is quite interesting. And that doesn't happen to me very often. But we'll take that. And these boys need to be aware. Um, that jumping in to tackles like that is probably not a good idea. But we are not getting stuck in, so there's no reason for them to be doing it. And it is going to be sporting with the next highlight. Despite the fact that they haven't had a shot on goal, we have had five and failed to score. And it is sporting who seem to be having most of the highlights. But we do have a highlight. Gomesh into the box and that's a header. It's gone over the top of the defender. Gomesh is in again. And Nero Novoa has put it in in what was a shambles of a goal. We finally managed to tap it over the line. 
and it's now Sporting nil, Benfica 1. And I'm really not sure what went on there. That was outrageously bad defending. Goalkeeper had a nightmare and Novoa was just there and said, thank you very much, and it's Sporting nil. Benfica won. If that had been my defence, I would have been fuming with them. And uh, However, despite all our possession, despite all our chances, it is another sporting highlight, and it's a cross into the box. Our defending was absolutely horrendous there. It comes out. The defending today is absolutely shocking, and that shot goes over the bar into Rosehead. I'm not sure that playing the low block is the right thing to be doing against Sporting, but at the moment it is working. We've decided to play this low block against teams who could get results against us, the idea being not to lose. It would be great if I can go unbeaten again this season. And if we just don't lose against these teams, then we're going to have a great chance. And Neres has taken advantage of another dreadful defensive error from Sporting. And it is now Sporting nil, Benfica 2. And boy, what kind of goals have we scored today? Gomez, a bit selfish, but the goalkeeper just spilled it into the path of Neres. It's now 2-0, and I'm not sure if it's deserved or not. There have been some dreadful errors by Sporting up front and in defence. They do have another highlight, though, and they do have a throw, and that's a good tackle by Bard. But Bard finds his Palacios, and I'm just wondering if Palacios is still feeling aggressive. Um, I don't think he is. He's quite calm at the moment, which is good news. And here is Neres. Neres looking for Abdi. Abdi escapes the tackle, but they do win it back. And they are going to look to come away with the ball. And, yeah, I was saying that this tactic is designed so that we don't lose matches. And if we don't lose now against these teams who have a chance against us, we're going to win the title. And here is Abde. Abde, he looks inside for Palacios. Palacios to Gomes. Andre Gomes, very young lad, who's actually playing quite well since he's come into the team. And there's a lovely ball through to Navoa. Navoa has a chance, and the best chance that he's had. He can't put it away. And that was easier to miss than it was. To, it was easier to score than it was to miss and we have given away a number of set pieces to sporting which is a little bit worrying um we don't want to be giving away too many free kicks that's a good header out from defense and here is neres neres finds rodriguez rodriguez to palacios palacios long ball forward abde is in acres of space he's looking to burst down the left he looks instead for bard Bard working the ball inside to Palacios. Palacios looking for Moretta. Moretta finds Bard. This is good football. Is there an end product? Bard bursting towards the byline. Can he get a cross in? He can't. He looks behind, finds Abde. Abde and Bard getting in each other's way. That's a good ball. It finds its way back into the middle. And Neres has made it 3-0. And I think that that puts us in a very comfortable position. Again, you have to question the defending from Sporting. It wasn't great defending. Once we got that ball into the box, they were all over the place. And Gomes, I think that might have been a penalty had Neres not put it in. Gomes just chested it off. Neres made it 3-0. And I think that's probably game over now. These boys are playing okay today. Sporting have not really been in the contest and have really not troubled us throughout the game. And here is Gomes. And Andre Gomez, again, he's robbed, but he is playing very well. He's constantly involved. Here's Neres. Neres looking to feed a through ball. Can't find his man, and Sporting will bring it forward. Defensively, we look solid. That was the idea today, to be very solid at the back. And hopefully we can maintain that and sport, not give Sporting a way through. And Rodriguez easily intercepts that. 
all the defenders are having tidy games. No one's playing brilliantly, but it's tidy. And whilst, <clears throat> whilst I'm about to say whilst we are playing well up top, then we'll be OK. But we've just given the ball away. And here comes Sporting. Sporting into the penalty area. Do not give away a penalty. This time, we're not going to get away with it. And Bard has given away a penalty and Sporting are about to come back into the game. They are checking penalty again, but this time it will be given. Yeah, for sure. They're not going to get away with it twice. And yellow card also for Melvin Bard. I need to tell him to actually ease off tackling. And it's been saved. <laughs> this game just goes from <laughs> crazy to crazier. The goalkeeper, Gurbic, has made the save. And I will tell Bard to ease off the tackles now. There's no need for it. And we remain 3-0 up. There is an awful lot of highlights going on here. I need to check just that I am in key highlights. Yep, it's just key highlights. And here comes Sporting again. It's quite an open affair, given that the score is 3-0. It's quite open, this game. And I guess could go either way. And it's still Sporting who are coming forward. And we need to be defensively good. They have finally scored... It is now Sporting 1, Benfica 3. I think these boys need a wake-up call at half-time. They have suddenly, Sporting have suddenly come to life and have scored the goal that they probably deserve. And it was, again, defensive errors that caused the goal. We've had four goals now and four defensive errors. And in the dressing room, I need to be saying... Uh, it's important to stay focused. And Rodriguez is now feeling very aggressive. I'm not quite sure what that's about. And whether or not, maybe they don't like sporting CP and it's getting them riled up. And we just need, just hold on to this, hold on to this, the ball, hold on to this game. We've got the game in the bag. We don't need to do anything. We don't need to actually change anything. We just need to keep playing well. And that is a poor ball. And here is Bard. Marato takes over. And Marato finds Gurbic. Gurbic with the long ball forward. We're not playing out from the back. And we're not going to press. We're not going to attempt to bring these teams on to us. And Abde picks up the loose ball. Abde into Gomes. Gomes, can he put it away? Yes, he can. It's 4-1. It's Sporting 1. Benfica 4 I think that probably now is game over. Gomes has had a brilliant season after Torres got injured. He's come into the side, taken up that shadow striker role, and he looks like a natural. And his finishing there, sublime. And it is Sporting 1, Benfica 4. And we are fortunate to have such good young players who can come in and take over from the likes of Torres and if we look at match momentum, we're absolutely destroying them. There's just this Fernandez is a bit of a pain in the neck. I think it's probably time now to make a few changes. And so we have made some changes, given that we do have to play Gothenburg in a few days. We've rested a few of the players, there, and so they will be fresh for the Gothenburg game. But we do obviously need to make sure that we win this game. And uh, it is Sporting, who've played quite well, really. And I'm not quite sure why they're 4-1 behind. They're not 4-1 behind. They are 4-2 behind. And they have come back into this game. I am going to shout at the team and demand more. This is not acceptable. The de defensively, we seem to have fallen apart. And we played so well for the first, like, 40 minutes. And defensively now we seem to have fallen apart. Are Sporting playing differently? I don't think so. I think that we've just gone off the boil. I think that we've just lost focus. And it's not been very pleasing to look at. And we shouldn't be losing focus. Interestingly to see Connor Roberts in that Sporting CP team. Um, a name familiar to all of you on the live stream from Burnley. And he must be getting on in age now. 
and as the game is coming into the last 10 minutes, it remains Sporting 2, Benfica 4. I think the game is probably done now. Match momentum has swung a little bit in the second half, but we've held on to it. We did enough in the first half. Second half is even, and we'll take this. It's a good win. And here is Sanramat. Sanramat, who's done well coming into this team this season. Um, not been spectacular, but has scored some lovely goals. Looks good for the future, Sanramat. And there's a lovely ball from him over the top to Zolis. Zolis, who's also come on. There's a chance. It is 5-2. Valesso, who also has come on as a substitute, has made it five goals to two. We'll take that. A great win, given that we were playing a little bit more defensively solid in this game to have come here and won 5-2. And now we will go seven points clear at the top of the league. Then I think that's a great performance. And coming here, deciding not to lose, not to be beaten. And I think this system might work for playing bigger teams than us, or teams that we feel might get a result against us. And I'm going to say that was do a good, nice work, and it's a good, thoroughly deserved victory. There were a lot of highlights in that game, and as you can see, after eight games, we have gone seven points clear now at the top. We still have a 100% record, and we are scoring a lot of goals. And so... We have to focus on the next game. And the next game coming up will be in the Champions League against Gothenburg of Sweden. And if we can win that one at home, then we could get into the top eight in the Champions League group phase. And that would make this a very, very good opening to the season. We have some very tough games following this. We have to play Juventus away. We will play Milan at home. We then have Ajax away and Stuttgart away. So we have some very tough games in the Champions League. We really should be winning this one. I think now it's time to go and get ready to play against Gothenburg. We'll see you soon. And so the team for today against Gothenburg is Gurbic in goal with Mela, Rodriguez, Morato and Bard at the back. Luis, Palacios and Neres in midfield with Abde, Gomes and Novoa up front. And in a recent poll that was conducted, only 8% of people thought that Gothenburg had any chance of getting anything out of this game. Although I tend to agree with them, we shouldn't be um, underestimating them. My assistant actually said to go very attacking today. I'm just using the attacking formation that we have, and I'm hoping that's going to be enough. We don't need to go very attacking, I think. And I think we should be just beating this Gothenburg team quite comfortably. I don't think that any sort of result should be in doubt. They are having a bit of possession down their right hand side though and something that possibly we need to keep an eye on as Marato, Marato, he's going to look outside he probably will look for Bard but he doesn't he finds a cross field ball over to Mela. Mela, who's in good form this season has done very well at right back and here is Neres, Neres finds Palacios Palacios, we need him to start pray, spraying the ball around, praying the ball around. We need him to start spraying the ball around, finding these good passes we know he's capable of. That was a poor pass, and Rodriguez does pick up the loose ball. And here's Marato. Marato finds Bard. Bard, who's come in and done quite well since Mendy got injured, and he's holding his own there at left back. Nice pass to Palacios. Here's Abde. Abde is robbed. And this team that we don't know much about, we couldn't really prepare for them and are doing quite well against us. And there's a long snapshot that goes over the crossbar. It's interesting that we had no information on this Gothenburg team. So we were going in a little bit blind and it usually indicates they're a poor team, but they are holding their own. And that's a nice ball into the box. Luis, was he taken out? The referee, I think, is going to give a penalty. I think it was a bit dodgy myself. I think it would be quite soft if it's given. They are looking at it in terms of a review. And the penalty is awarded. We do have a penalty. 
and I forget who it will be. I think it might be Abde who's stepping up to take it. It is as Abde to take the penalty, and it's 1-0 Benfica, and I think that might have pushed us up into the top eight now. Nine points from 12 will be very good at this stage. And these are the games, though, that we should be winning. These games are very winnable and you should not expect to lose any points in these games. It's the games coming up, Juventus, Milan. They are going to be a lot tougher. But at the moment, no, we are still outside. We are still outside the top eight. And teams around us must be doing very well as well. And so, and it is going to be Gothenburg on the ball. They are playing quite well, actually. And it is a bit worrying. This is not the walkover that it looked like it was going to be. But that's a poor pass. And Gurbage, he looks for Morato. Morato Rodriguez finds Bard. Bard back to Morato. They're playing quite a high press. And maybe we shouldn't be playing out from the back. Although I don't see why not, because we are a better team than them, clearly. And here's Gomesh. Gomesh playing as the shadow striker. He finds Mela. Mela, lovely ball down the line to Luis. Luis with the cross into the box. There's the header. It's come off the crossbar and it's cleared. 1-0 is not a scoreline I'm very comfortable with at the moment after 16 minutes. Again, there are a lot of highlights in this game. And we just check we're on key highlights. We still are on key highlights. And it's now 20 minutes and Neres is about to take a corner to the back post. Headed over the crossbar. Remains 1-0. We've totally dominated the game in terms of possession. 60%. We've had all the chances Gothenburg haven't had a chance, a shot on goal yet. And we need to take advantage of that, put some of our chances away. And here is Bard. Bard looking for support, but he can't find anyone. It's a bit narrow and congested in there. Something to keep an eye on. And here's Gurbic. Where's he going? He finds Rodriguez. Rodriguez and Rafael Luis. That's a beautiful ball to Gomesh. And Gomesh has made it 2-0. What a lovely goal. Gomesh is on fire playing in that shadow striker role. I think he's just 21 years old. And he is doing a fabulous job. And that was an interesting ball. Rodriguez, not renowned for his passing. It was, in fact, Rafael Luis playing at DLP. He absolutely fired in a beautiful ball. And Gomesh said, thank you very much. It's now Benfica 2, Gothenburg 0. And we are up to 6th, as I thought we might be. And we need to start piling goals on because we can... Goal difference can make this even better for us. And we do have a free kick, and it's going to be Neres with the free kick to the back post. And there's a header, and it goes just wide. It would be nice if we could get four or five goals here, push the goal difference up a little bit. Teams around us, like Napoli and Milan, will have to play tomorrow. So uh, we still need to get goals, and I think it will be important. And there's a free kick, and that is hit the post. No, it was a good save. It's going to be a corner as we are coming to the last five minutes of the first half. It's Benfica 2, Gothenburg 0, and that near post corner is easily cleared. And we do have to be careful, because we could get caught on the break here. And... It is Gothenburg looking to break, but we've got numbers back now. And we've managed to snuff out that attack. And it remains 2-0 as we come up to half-time. It is a free kick for Benfica. Into the centre of the penalty area. And Marato has headed home. The referee is checking something. Was it a push or something? What is the referee checking there? They are checking to see if the goal should be allowed. And it is awarded. I'm not quite sure what they were checking there. Looked good to me. A beautiful leap by Morato. It's 3-0 now. And goal difference is important. It might make a difference. They were checking offside, but he was well onside. And that was a lovely goal. And we are still in sixth, although maybe the league table hasn't been updated yet. And we've dominated this game. And Gothenburg have hardly been in the game. I think we should just keep going with this. I will make some changes after 15 minutes. It's really important to keep rotating some of these players, 
give them a rest. I don't think we're under any threat from Gothenburg, and so we can bring players on in a few minutes. And we still have the match momentum. We are still pushing forward. Everything is looking in our favour. And after this highlight, I think we will probably make some changes and bring some fresh legs on. And here is Palacios. It's important to rest him and Luis, as they will have long seasons ahead of them, if we can keep hold of Luis, that is. And Bard at the back picks that long ball up comfortably. Here is Gurbic. Gurbic, what is he going to do? He finally releases it out to Mela. Mela, who's having a good game today. Nice to see Mela playing well out on that right-hand side. And here is Neres. And that was a foul referee. And are they going to get someone sent off here? And they do have a man sent off. And that means that we have, we should now. They have put someone up front, leaving the left-hand side exposed. So I'm going to ask the team to focus play down the left. And after this, we will make some changes. Neres flings in the corner, and it is fired out. And we've won the ball, but, ow, oh, Gomes has got himself injured. That's not a good sign. Gomes back to Luis. Luis with the snapshot, and it goes over the crossbar. Let's get Gomes off before it gets any worse. I think it's time to make some changes. And so we have brought some fresh legs onto the pitch. We have brought Injai on at right back. Gedson has come on for Louise at DLP. Sanramat has come on for the injured Gomesh. And Haig has come on and Zolis up front. And so we've got some players resting for our game coming up at the weekend. And here is Bard. Bard is looking for Huig. Huig, was he taken down there, referee? It's not being given. I thought we were going to get another penalty there. Not given. We need to win this ball in midfield, which we have done. Well done, Marato. And here is Bard. Bard rushing forward again down the left. Can he get a cross in? He's looking for support. Inside he finds Palacios. Palacios he finds Getson. Getson fires it past the post. It remains Benfica 3. Gottenberg nil. And I've noticed that they have gone back to putting a winger on that side. So we will take that away and stop focusing down the right. They are trying to outfox me a little bit here. <laughs> and I think we'll just leave it for now. We'll let them play about with their system. We're not really under any threat at the moment, so we'll just let them play. And it's going to be 3-0, I think, as we're coming up to the final whistle. It looks like it's going to finish. Benfica 3, Gothenburg 0. We will be in fifth at the end of the day, and that is a pretty good result. Can we get another goal? I'd like to think we can get one more for goal difference sake. As Sanramat finds Haig. Haig over the top. He's looking for Solis. Solis can't make it. It's all the way back to the goalkeeper. Long ball forward. There's only Benfica defenders in the picture. Marata, he is going to find... Palacios, Palacios with the ball over the top to Huig. Huig into the box. Lovely ball into the middle and Sanramat drives it at the goalkeeper. It remains 3-0. I thought we were going to get another goal before the end. Doesn't look like it's going to be. Bard picking up the ball finds Palacios. Palacios having a very good game today. That's a poor pass and we have given the ball away. And it's all the way back, and it's going to come back at them. Gothenburg are just giving the ball back to us. Marata finds Palacios. Palacios, Rodriguez, Rodriguez, Palacios. He's having a lovely game today. Here's Bard. Bard, Palacios. He's constantly involved, looking for Haig. Haig can't get hold of it. I think that's going to be full time. I think you can blow your whistle now, referee. We are over the allotted time added on. And it is Zolis, Palacios. It's all going off here. There's another bad tackle. And is the referee going to allow time for this free kick? He isn't. And it is full time. It's Benfica 3, Gothenburg 0. And nice work, everyone. It was a good victory. And so our record just...
just keeps going and going. And we are up to fifth in the Champions League group phase. And things are looking very rosy in the garden. And in terms of the schedule, you can see we remain unbeaten in the league. We have just lost that one game in the Champions League to Real Madrid. And we were very unlucky there. I'll play through now, probably up until the end of December. And we'll come back. Um, around about that time when the transfer window is about to open and I'm about to lose all my key players again. And so that's it for this video. If you are brand new to the channel, then why not subscribe, like, watch and comment, help the channel to grow and to help us to support the very worthwhile cause that you get to see scrolling up above me. And I am a very contented manager. There is very little that can trouble us in this Portuguese league. It, and there are only three teams we need to worry about. And I think, given the results against Porto and Sporting in the league, we found a way to manage those teams quite easily. All that remains to be said now is take care, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next episode.